a pleasant day STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. So we are now done with week number two parabola. So we can now proceed to week three, which will talk about the ellipse. For this video lesson, we will be discussing about the definition of an ellipse. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to define and illustrate an ellipse and its parts. Are you ready? Based on the discovery of Apollonius of Perga, referring to an ellipse in a cutting of the plane, which is not parallel to any generator, the curve form will be an ellipse. However, when it is not parallel but perpendicular to any of the generators, then we form a special type of ellipse, and that is a circle. So still, the circle is part of the ellipses, but what is the characteristic that you need to remember about the um, ellipse on Apollonius of Perga's study. It is the word not parallel. But how do we define an ellipse in two-dimensional conic section? So here is the definition. An ellipse is a closed figure in a plane that closely resembles an oval. So it looks like an oval or an oblong. By definition, it is a set of all coplanar points such that the sum of the distances from the two fixed points is constant. Notice this red line and this blue line. So this distance and this distance has an equal distance with this axis. So whatever are the distances of the two will be equal to these axes. And later you will meet uh, what is the meaning of that axis, okay? So the same with the definition of conics. This time, um, it has already two fixed points. Unlike a parabola, it has only one fixed point. And then, the two fixed points are what we know as the foci of the ellipse. So sometimes we also refer to the foci as foci, or they are the two focus. Okay, so we do not say focuses. It's foci or foci. So that's the plural of focus. So observe how the sum of the distances changes from our two fixed point. We have two types of ellipses. We have the horizontal ellipse. This is how it looks like. And we also have a vertical ellipse. And let us see how the parts of an ellipse changes from horizontal to vertical. So let's have the first part. An ellipse has two axes of symmetry. The longer axis is referred to as the major axis, and the shorter axis is called the minor axis. So observe this horizontal ellipse with the major axis. What about the minor axis? So it is a um, vertical line. So the type of ellipse is determined by the um, type of major axis. So since the major axis is horizontal, then the ellipse is a horizontal ellipse. Okay, so next one. For a vertical ellipse, the major axis is a vertical line. Well, the minor axis is a horizontal line. Comparing, look at the two parts in terms of the major axis and the minor axis. The major axis contains the foci 
Consequently, the foci are inside the ellipse. So observe the focal points are what we know as the foci. So we name them as F sub one and F sub two. For the vertical ellipse, they will, they will just move along this axis, the major axis also. So it's always the major axis um, that contains the focal points or the foci. So again, the foci are the fixed point of the ellipse. So compare the collinear points along the major axis. Third, the intersection of two axes is called the center of the ellipse. Observe the center of the horizontal ellipse. So the minor axis and the major axis intersect at that point. So we name that point as center or point C. Look how it changed. Still, it is the intersection of the minor axis and the major axis. Comparing the horizontal ellipse and vertical ellipse, this is how they look like. So notice that the center is collinear with the two foci. Next, the ellipse intersect the major axis in two points called the vertices of the ellipse. In short, the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. So we have V sub one, V sub two. So line V sub one, V sub two is our major axis. Um, consequently, the endpoints of the minor axis are called the co-vertices. Usually we name them as W sub one and W sub two, respectively. So meaning the endpoints of the minor axis are these points. Look how it changes from a vertical ellipse. And this is the comparison. Still, the center might be, or we can say that the center of the ellipse is collinear with the vertices and the foci. So there are five points here along the major axis. While the center can also be collinear with the co-vertices along the minor axis, respectively. Next part, we have the what we call latus rectum. So in a parabola, we only have one latus rectum. But observe that when we draw segments passing through the foci of the ellipse, and since we have two, we will also have form two latus rectum. But in plural form, we refer to them as the latera recta. Okay, so these are lines which are perpendicular to the major axis. So look at this lines that passes through the focal points or the foci. And they are both perpendicular to the major axis. And observe what it looks like in a vertical ellipse. Comparing the lateral recta. Any question? So observe and compare. Next slide. The lines outside the ellipse that is parallel to the minor axis and has the same distance from the vertic vertices as the foci are the two directrices. So notice that the same property with the um, parabola. So this is where the vertices are located. So the distance from the one of the vertices 
um, V sub 1 going to F sub 1 has the same distance from V sub 1 going to the directrix outside to one of the directrices outside the ellipse. The same thing with V sub 2 here. It will be equidistant. Okay, so that is how we draw the directrices in terms of their distance from the vertices and from the um, foci of the ellipse. Notice that the directrices are parallel to the what? To the minor axis as well as with the lateral recta. So they are all parallel. So it depends on the type of the ellipse because the directrices of the vertical ellipse are parallel with the, again, with the horizontal, with the minor axis, sorry. It's the minor axis. Question? Okay, so this is the comparison. Let's proceed now. We also have important distances. No? When we compute for the standard equation of an ellipse. So these are very important distances. 2a is what we refer to as the major axis. So the major axis is a distance from v sub 1 to v sub 2. Our 2b distance is our distance from point w sub 1 to point w sub 2. So the line segment is w sub 1 w sub 2. So this is the length of the minor axis. So the distance a, b, and c are lengths, okay? And 2c is f sub 1 to f sub 2. So this is the um, distance from focus to focus. However, the twice of these distances can also be referred to a distance A, B, and C. So which is the distance A? Distance A is from center to one of the four vertices. Okay, so you start from um, the center to the vertex. So this is your distance A. Distance B is from the center to one of the co-vertices. So this, this one. So this is distance B. Then distance C is from the center to one of the foci. So this one is distance C. So notice that A is the longer, longest distance, while B and C distances are shorter distances. Always remember that the distance from the center to the vertex is always the longest distance in an ellipse. Okay, so A is the longest distance. And look at how it changes from a vertical ellipse. This time, this is A. This is um, B. And then the C distance is from center to one of the foci. So I hope you understand. So this is the comparison of the two. So always remember all these important parts, the major axis, the minor axis, which are the two axes of symmetry respectively, the center, the vert, vertices and the core vertices and of course the two foci of the ellipse and this is how it looks like when the cutting of the plane with a double right circular cone intersects with each other so they are not parallel so these are some um, formulas and reminders that you will be needing 
um, for you to learn the standard equation of the ellipse center at 0, 0, which we'll be discussing on the next video lesson. You can also browse these formulas on your self-instructional pocket. Remember that ellipses are also everywhere, just like any other conic. So observe this football, the stadium in Clark, and the watermelon. In astronomy, we refer to them as the orbital, the elliptical shape of the orbits around a certain heavenly body. So. In the solar system, for example, the sun is our focus and every planet forms elliptical orbit around the sun. Here are the references used in this presentation. So did you learn something from this video lesson? For the next part of our discussion, we will talk about the standard equation of an ellipse center at zero, zero.